Ahoy there, Pirate Brethren. Well, we knew it was inbound, and yes, it has finally been announced. So, we got an update from the devs today over on the official Discord, and I imagine it'll be up on Twitter by the time I'm making this video, but they have announced what they're doing. So, Raging Tides is now on the horizon, and we plan to deploy a maintenance tomorrow, February 27th. Dock your ships and hang tight while the new content sail into the Indian Ocean. That's at 3 a.m. Central European time, 1 p.m. AET time, and 6 p.m. Pacific time. That's 9 p.m. Eastern time, 2 a.m. GMT. Duration is for about two hours. Anyway, on top of that, we finally got a full set of patch notes, which we're going to read through very quickly together. So, starting at the top, we have Seasonal Gameplay, Plaguebringers, the Fleet of Pestilence Advanced Guard, will spawn throughout the world. Defeat them to obtain Plaguebringer Captain Heads. As you sink more Plaguebringer ships, you progressively anger the Fleet of Pestilence. Past a certain hostility level, they might just send a mighty foe after you. It's up to you to sink them and collect the rare items they carry. Kingpin Bounties. Starting week 2, March 5th to 26th, 2024. The Jaws of Retribution. Introducing the Zam ha Harar... I'm going to butcher this, I apologise. Zam Hararibu. Starting week 5, March 26th, April 16th, 2024. Anguish from the Abyss, Road Mangodin. So, these are more like events, I guess, that are taking place throughout the season. It's exactly what I hoped for. Short-term events that last for a couple of weeks and change up the mechanics of the game for a short period of time throughout the season. Um... In the form of kingpin bounties, at least. But uh, it's a start, nonetheless. What else do we have? Okay, we have seasonal contracts. Three unique contracts. The African ailment, the pursuing plague, and the encroaching epidemic. Complete these contracts to receive the seasonal vanities for your captain and ships. One repeatable contract. Pest control. Deliver two plague bringer captain heads to Robin Blackwood to earn silver and white skull gin. So... Again, these are contracts limited for the duration of the season. Smuggler's Pass. A mysterious messenger has arrived at the docks of St. Anne's, bringing with him brand new blueprints for fo from foreign lands. While he won't trade those for gold, you can complete challenges to get your hands on them. The uh, Caranode, which is a revolutionary lightweight cannon. So I guess this is one of the new weapons you'll get with the Smuggler's Pass. And the Wailing Ward, which is... I guess a piece of furniture and then the La Peste Schematics one, which is, I guess, another piece of furniture, increased damage to weak points to enemy ships by 10%. Okay, let's look at what's been updated. Gameplay wise, Legendary Heist, the heist ambushes will exhibit more threatening behaviors to players who have obtained the helm coveted loot. Ambushes will spawn more frequently. More ambushes will spawn each time. So this is going to make escaping those legendary corp heists much more difficult, I imagine. A hostile takeover. Increase the participation capacity of the following manufacturers during a hostile takeover. So some of them were limited to uh, three or two players. Um, I guess they've now increased it for a number of them across the various locations in Africa, the Red Isles, and the East Indies. Uh, rebalanced a genera the generation of opportunities to scale accordingly based on the number of players that have unlocked a region. So I guess the ones that have less control, will spot less, less players having conquered them, will spawn more often in the list. That's really good. I had to wait ages for an opportunity to capture the last outpost I needed in the Red Isles. Uh, ship perks. So they're modifying the better. Adjusted the Lancer perk available on the better to reduce the flooding status effect damage dealt. So this is a, 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 I guess, a debuff. I guess some people were exploiting the perk on the Bedar, but uh, I haven't been using it, so I can't speak to how uh, well that was being used. Um, let's have a look. Ship rank. The ship rank max cap has been increased from 11 to 12. And then there's been a number of adjustments to the gear on how it affects your ship tier rank. I guess all increasing across the board to make, yeah, accessing rank 12 more accessible uh, contracts for contracts unwelcome aboard the skirmishes spawn rate has been reduced that's just i guess a tweak world events change the colonial ship world event invite condition to infamy tier 9 cutthroat 
I guess people were joining that when they were under leveled and getting their asses handed to them. Uh, Captain's Logbook. When performing a view in map from a contract giver, the logbook tabs are now disabled and the player can only be in the map tab. Okay. Uh, tutorial. There's been some updates to the tutorial. Uh, goods and resources. Cooldown for using consumable items is reset after player is sunk and respawns at sea. Yes, thank you. That is uh, a much better way of doing things. Uh, graphics. Improved resolution of various dialogue cutscenes. Eh, I wasn't so much worried about that. Photo mode is now accessible through <laughs> while in combat from the wheel. Uh, I guess if you care about photo mode, that's really important. Uh, fixed. So the Helm Wager, dens like Talok Penjora and St. Anne's will no longer be selected as points of delivery. I hadn't encountered that, but I guess that was a problem. Uh, cutthroat Cargo, fix an issue where the carrier of the legendary map did not receive a notification and was not able to disembark to the outpost after running out of time. I didn't encounter that either, but those are good fixes to have. Uh, contract, a note of business. The contract is now available when players quit to main menu and reconnect to the game. Job board. Fix an issue where the object for Tavern Fruit is incorrectly updated when the contribution contributors own a partial number of the required items each. Okay. Fix an issue where player will not receive any crafting materials to craft the better if their ship was encumbered while submitting the contract. Okay, I wondered if those were issues. I've had a few uh, encumbered issues with the ships recently, especially using the Brigantine. Um, the Helm. Okay, we have an ongoing, provided a partial fix to allow some affected players that were previously unable to enter the Helm office. I had heard about this, but uh, I hadn't experienced it myself, so hopefully this is helping to mitigate it, even if there's more to be done later. Fix an issue where the players are stuck in an infinite loading screen after they enter the Helm office when asked to meet Unita for the second time. Yeah, these would be very, very annoying. Fix an issue where the object for roving orders from the order registry incorrectly requires only one school room instead of the intended quantity of 100. <laughs> I guess people were exploiting that. Uh, fixed another issue in the tutorial. Goods and resources. Helm wager chest should now appear in the player's inventory when the player accepts the helm wager activity. Cool. Uh, NPC resolved an issue where the player placeholder text was present during the dialogue scene with Admiral Ramhars upon completion of the contract Dawn of War. Again, hadn't experienced that, but that's good. Fix an issue where the dialogue scene does not play when players turn in the helm lease to Unita. Fix an issue where players have to interact twice with Unita to progress in a nose for business contract. So I guess depending on what platform you're on, these may have been experienced across the board. I didn't experience them personally, so that's really, really good that they're fixing things. Uh, graphics, PS5, increased loading screen, sorry, loading speed of outpost assets during the loading screen that happens while players disembark from ships. That's present on the Xbox too. Um, sometimes you're loading and the beach looks like a flat panel for about two seconds and then loads in the texture of the sand fixed an issue where the where the distant views are obscured by a glow when players near navigators cross outpost in the evening hadn't noticed that either but yes lots more this is a long a lot of patch notes i hope i'm not boring you guys uh fixed a host left server error that occurs after the cutthroat cargo carrier attempts to disembark from the outpost after respawning post death screen uh, fix an issue with the free trial where players frequently disconnect from the free trial version if they shift from premium edition to free trial version while processing resources in the refinery. What? I don't understand that. Uh, Ubisoft Connect. Fix an issue where players is stuck in the main menu after trying to open Ubisoft Connect with the network disconnected via router. Again, these must be small issues that people have reported. I haven't experienced issues us using Ubisoft Connect through the game because I don't use Ubisoft Connect with the game. It's much more convenient to use it on your phone. Um, Xbox, loss of service when purchasing a vanity from the store will lead the player back to the main menu with an error message. I haven't really made a purchase from the store yet on the Xbox, but uh, good to know. And uh, yes, UI, I think this is probably going to be the end of it now. So lots and lots of UI fixes. I'm not going to read all of these. Um, Anything interesting on the list here? No.
No, I think they're all pretty self-explanatory, just ongoing improvements. Uh, control, fix the control input that enables players to unlock helm upgrade without being able to see the upgrade details. That's good. Uh, audio issues resolved. Accessibility issues resolved. Uh, achievements, Pirate Assemble Trophy does not unlock for players if he joins a group of two friends by joining them from another world. Okay. Uh, others. Integrated further engine optimization to mitigate crashes caused by device memory issues. That's really good. I wonder if that's been what's causing the crash on the Xbox uh, and the other platforms, but uh, hopefully that resolves it. Ubisoft Connect fixed an incorrect value shown in the game overview regarding the number of ships that can be crafted. Loading, optimized loading times that occur when entering or exiting the helm office. Introduction, fix an issue where the player's ship sinks even when they do not get hit by, 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 I guess by, not my, reinforcements attack. And then miscellaneous localization fixes. Wow, there's a lot in this. This is a big patch for such a uh, short amount of time in the game, so... My read on this is that they had a deadline to meet with the launch. They knew some of these issues were present. They were probably already working on them before um, the game launched and then obviously got the more feedback from the community during the first open beta and then the first week of play. But that is a lot to pack into a patch for Season 1. I'm pretty impressed by it. But, uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Um, as I hope that wasn't too boring. I wanted to go through the patch notes. I was really curious to see what kind of uh, response we were going to get in the first season. But uh, yes, I plan on covering this type of detail going forward as they make adjustments to the game. And we'll review how these fixes have uh, impacted the game over the coming weeks. But um, yeah, if you enjoy quick and consistent Skull and Bones content, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. And yeah, comments, shares, greatly appreciated. I will see you guys on the seas. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.